New Orleans Police and the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office are both making changes in light of Baton Rouge, Dallas, and other recent incidents involving police officers. They're both mandating now, now that at least two officers respond to all emergency calls until further notice. That will affect the response to other types of crime. And so that it should be no secret that working in teams of two, when officers who are alone in a car respond to calls that require one officer, um, that process will slow down until such time as we can go back to that. But for right now, we're working in teams of two, no less than two, so that we can ensure each other's safety. And with us in studio tonight for more reaction and perspective is Michael Glasser, president of the Police Association of New Orleans. Thanks so much for being here. Happy to be here. It's been a difficult uh, time for you and for the New Orleans Police Department. You said you just got back from Dallas. It is. We just spent a week in Dallas and uh, with five funerals there. And, of course, we had two of our own in the weeks preceding, and now we're back again. And, Mr. Glasser, talk to us about this, this new change in, in policy. Uh, obviously, we have a manpower shortage here in the city of New Orleans that's been bla blaringly clear. Uh, how do we go about actually executing this and still deliver the services to keep the city safe? Well, it was a time when we had two officer cars as well as one officer cars. And of course, our staffing shortages have prohibited us from doing that as much as we would like to. Uh, we have encouraged the superintendent to try to go back to having two officer cars. We're going to probably do a, a compromise at this point where we're going to have one officer cars but have two respond to a call. It's better than one, although we would prefer to have two officers in one car because sometimes that minute or two that it takes a second officer to get there, a lot can happen in that minute while that officer is alone. And sometimes when that second officer shows up, they're now alone because the first officer is compromised and they don't know what they're walking into. So we would prefer to have two officers in one car, but in this case, we're happy to have at least two officers showing up on each call. Obviously, response times we've talked to you about it has been a priority. This is going to affect it, Chief Harrison said. No question it's going to. Uh, it's going to take more people to do the same job we did before. And of course, it's labor intensive and we don't have labor. So that would be a problem. What are you hearing from your fellow officers? As we mentioned that you just came back from Dallas. Uh, certainly, you were talking to other officers there. Uh, is there a tangible kind of fear or kind of concern now from the police community that they're, every time they're going on a call, they could potentially get ambushed as seemingly as they did today? Well, absolutely. That, that has become a real threat. It's not just something we hear about and read about somewhere else. It's now hit home, and it's hit home for a lot of different agencies and a lot of different jurisdictions. Uh, officers are concerned about that. As you know, we have particularly a real criminal element here in New Orleans. We're accustomed to that. It's a dangerous city, as many other cities are. But this is something new. We're not accustomed to walking into ambushes, deliberately calculated ambushes. We're not accustomed to that, and it's becoming, unfortunately, all too prevalent. So there is a great deal of concern from the officers on that. What does that do to how police respond to an incident? I mean, obviously, you're going in with a little bit more fear than you already had to begin with. Well, we're, we're just that much more vigilant. We're, we're that much more careful. We're going to have to take our time. We're going to have to really assess the circumstances that we're going on and be very, very cautious and careful about it. But, you know, I can promise you that the New Orleans Police Department is still going to provide professional service. We're still going to deal with the community and the compassion that we're supposed to. But we are going to be extremely vigilant. Mr. Glasser, what do you need from the community at this point? Because we always hear that the community needs to be involved in helping to secure areas to keep our city safe. Uh, if you are telling citizens right now, and you have a channel here right now to tell people, what do you need from the community to make this safer, to make this interaction better? Well, we'd like the community to understand that we have a job to do. Our job is to protect them. That, that is, in fact, our job. Uh, number one priority is public safety. Unfortunately, it's not our own safety. It's public safety. That's our number one priority. Uh, we would like to remain safe in the same process. So we would like them to understand that if, if we appear a little abrupt or if we appear a little bit too authoritative, it's not because we're trying to be mean or we're trying to be uh, angry. It's just that we're trying to make sure that our instructions are followed so that we don't have any accidents, we don't have any misunderstandings, and if there is a problem, that we're prepared to address it. Mike Glasser, President of Panel, thanks for being with us. Thank you.